Yeah, so my name is Damian Campbell. We have a clinic here in, uh, in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta. We work with an endocrinologist. Uh, we treat kids with short stature, uh, with growth hormone. Uh, we also work with adults. I've been doing this for about 10 years. A friend of mine sent me a bunch of videos to react to, so I'm just gonna watch them real quick and react to them. We'll see how it goes. This video is on, so you really want to grow taller. Well, then you need to make more human growth hormone. Let's see what this guy has to say. How much human growth hormone does it take to get taller? Well, first understand HGH is not some drug you should be buying and injecting into. First of all, every, everybody produces human growth hormone. Everybody, every human has it produced naturally. Some people have issues with their pituitary gland where it's not produced naturally, but everybody has it yourself it's made naturally in your brain and you can boost it with certain inputs like diet exercise nutrition the more you're making every day over a long period of time more it could possibly grow more bone but nothing is guaranteed because hgh is only one part of a larger chemical cycle to learn more check out my channel and hit those buttons so yeah i mean hgh is required and is uh, to grow taller um, this is how everybody grows from birth. Uh, the issue is some people have short stature and short stature basically says that everything is normal about you. You're just not growing to your expectations. You know, yeah, interesting video. Should my child be evaluated for growth hormones? But don't forget, nutrition is always important. Today I'm answering one of your questions. How do I know if my child needs to be evaluated for growth hormone? So over age two, kids should be growing at least two inches. So when you're being, so she's asking, you know, how do I know when my child should be evaluated for, if they're basically producing enough growth hormone or HGH? Uh, essentially, well, let's see what she has to say. A year. So if the growth slows down and they're not growing two inches a year, that could be a sign they need to be evaluated. Their final height is really going to... So basically, one way to one red flag, if when when watching your kids grow up, is if you know, say for a six month for a year period, they're not actually growing. So if you put a mark a mark them on the wall, and over a course of a year they're not actually growing, then it, this is a sign that maybe they need they need to get evaluated. Uh, they should get you know go see an endocrinologist, go see the pediatrician, and figure out what's going on, and then you go from there depend on mom and dad's height. You also want to make sure that they're getting enough good nutrition, calcium, vitamin D, and iron because they can't grow without that. So if you're concerned about your child's growth, talk to your pediatrician and they're going to look at the growth chart and see are they truly growing at least two inches a year. Then in the tween or teen years is when they go through that growth spurt and they often grow more than two inches a year. And then after puberty, their growth will slow down. So things we can do to evaluate your child besides looking at their growth chart are getting an x-ray of the hand to see how old your kid's bones actually are. So if your child is eight, but their bones are six, that means that they're gonna be a little bit of a late bloomer, so it's okay to give them a little more time. But if they're eight and their bones say they're 10, then that's, I'm concerned they're gonna stop growing earlier. Right, so some some kids have delayed uh, delayed growth, and so their, their growth plates are actually behind. So they're basically, their growth plates are wide open. So when you go get the x-ray of your, you know, your left hand flat down, you know, you can, you'll be able to see, you know, if the growth plates are completely open or, or basically where, what age, what bone age they are. We can also do some blood work to give us an idea as to whether or not their body is making enough growth hormone, but you can't measure growth hormone exactly, so you have to measure it indirectly by following something called IGF-1. And we also wanna rule out any other medical conditions that could be happening, which could be affecting your child's growth. So see your own pediatrician, but hopefully that gives you a little summary of when you need to get your child evaluated for growth issues. And, and, and that is a basically, ex that lady knows exactly what she's talking about because there could be you need to get your blood work done to be evaluated to see if you have any any underlying conditions um if you're you know what stage of growth your child's in get the x-ray to left hand um and from there you can decide whether or not you need to the child needs can, growth hormone will actually help the growth hormone won't help if your growth plates are closed typically 
That's after the age of 16, its growth horm hormone has been proven not to be effective in growth. Okay, this is, for, is, this is from Dr. Yoshi. It's titled, Thinking About Growth Hormone for Your Child, Find Out the Criteria and the Best Timing for Treatment. Well, the best timing is, is the earlier you catch it, the better. That's it. That is the, is the best timing. What criteria need to be met to start growth hormone? And when is a good time to start? Growth hormone is used in very particular situations for kids who have what's called short stature. Short stature is defined as height at about the second percentile or below for age. So he's talking about percentiles and height. And, you know, they want really the basic definition of short stature is everything is normal about your child, but he's just not growing to it, his expectations. Now, before we jump to give growth hormone, it's important to rule out any underlying illnesses. For example, abnormal hormone levels or an illness where you're not absorbing nutrients. Yeah, we've had some we've had some kids come in. They had, you know, one in particular, he had anemia. And when our endocrinologist saw him, he had a, the underlying condition was anemia, so the anemia had to be treated first. And once that treat was treated, then he could start the growth hormone. But there's any there could be a variety of conditions that need to be treated first like inflammatory bowel disease. Once those things are ruled out, then there's three main questions that we ask. Number one, what is the child's current height? Number two, is the child growing at the expected rate? And number three, how tall are the parents or what's the mid-parental height? For kids who are two years old and above, as long as they're growing at the expected rate, so the expected rate is basically, it's a, it's like the velocity of growth of your child. Even if they're at or below the second percentile, usually this is a sign of a genetic or familial short stature. If your child isn't growing at the expected rate or is much shorter than mid-parental height, this will require further evaluation and possible growth hormone treatment. For kids where all underlying conditions have been ruled out, it's a case-by-case -case decision as to whether growth hormone should be used. If it is decided that growth hormone will be used, the recommended time to start is between five years of age and early puberty. The height increase from growth hormone is hard to predict, but is on average two to four inches over the expected height without treatment. That said, there are kids who don't respond and there are- Yeah, so the expected growth that taking HGH is gonna add, is he's saying it's gonna be two to four inches over the height if you weren't taking HGH. And this is for children who are not growing to expectation. Here's a little video on a kid showing his improvement over the period of time when he's taking HGH. He's growing. He's growing, he's got a smile. So when they're putting out the percentile of height, this this is all done in the growth chart. So when you see the endocrinologist, he's gonna he's into a growth chart uh, of your kid, and this is uh, and they put plots, you know, where you are within this range over time, and, and the idea is to get you into the above the 50th percentile. Most of the kids that are taking the growth hormone are in the lower percentile, and so the idea is to get you above that 50 percentile even higher. Okay, this one's called Why Your Child Is Not Growing As Expected. The two most common problems that we encounter in treating children is a deficiency in the amount of human growth hormone that's being produced and also a deficiency in the quality of human growth hormone. Okay, so, you know, this is a medical doctor with experience talking, so maybe I'm misinterpreting this, but... When you do that, when we come back and we get the blood work results and, and everything's going to come back normal, your child's going to be producing 
HGH at normal levels. This is for short stature. So, every, I mean, everything's, all their blood work's gonna come back normal. The, the IGF-1 level, uh, which measures the growth hormone, is gonna come back normal. But he's just not growing to expectation. So, by supplementing HGH, the idea is to give yourself, give the child a boost, and then he's gonna grow even more. So you're gonna give him a boost beyond his natural level, which is a healthy level. It's not unhealthy level, it's a normal level of HGH, but the idea is to boost it, and then you get the growth spurt. In the first case, it means the child is just not producing enough human growth hormone in the pituitary gland in the brain. In the second case, when we look at the quality of the human growth hormone, we see that the quantity, the amount is fine, but it's the quantity that is incorrect. That means that the sequence of amino acids in the long chain molecule of uh, 20,000 molecular weight is not correct. So the child is producing deficient human growth hormone. And for that reason, we use uh, the laboratory produced human growth hormone to replace it. Okay, that was nicely said. This is Damien Campbell from HGH Fierta Clinic. Any questions about growth hormone, please get in contact with us. Uh, we would love to help.